Now, if you wanted a luxurious seven-seater from Mercedes, your options were the R-Class and the GL-Class. But that was until last year, when the R-Class was knocked off the list. And the GL-Class, well, it was a bit dated since it came to India a little late in this product cycle. But in 2013, it's different because Mercedes has brought the new GL to India. This is a mammoth of an SUV. We're gonna see whether it's better than the previous one or not. Well, basically, everything is new. For starters, it just looks better. The chiseled, chunky headlamps and the big twin slat grille dominate the face. Our test car looked all the more impressive because of the AMG front and rear skirts. The flared wheel arches, the chrome trim for the belt line and lower body parts. All of this is being offered by Mercedes as standard for the first 100 GLs. It also gets gorgeous 21-inch wheels and nestled inside are these special calipers. I don't know how it's looking on the television screen or on your computer monitor, but here in person, the face of the new GL looks very striking, very imposing. I like it. And uh, apart from the new design, of course, Mercedes has also used a lot of lightweight materials to keep the weight down. Under the skin, there's a modern platform that's derived from the new Mercedes M-Class. The GL is also more aerodynamically efficient. It is also a bit lighter than the outgoing car. You see, the hood, front fenders and some suspension components are made from aluminium. Magnesium is used elsewhere and so is reinforced plastic. All of this helps to save 50 kilograms of weight, which might not sound like much until you consider that the new GL is even bigger than the outgoing GL in every which way. Okay, on the more widely accepted metric scale, the new GL is 32 millimeters longer than before. And that surely does help. Now one benefit of the GL's massive length is that even with the third row of seats up, you have decent luggage room here to store luggage in. The third row of seats can be folded flat at the press of a button. That opens up enough space to move a house. And if you flip the second row down, you get 2,300 litres of luggage space. The GL is also 14 millimetres wider and 10 millimetres taller than the outgoing car. From the side, the sculpted surfaces try to mask its size, with some amount of success. Now, to access the third row, one pull of a handle here, another one here, seat flips forward and you have a nice wide access to the third row. Now, let's see, but you know what, for a third row, surprisingly good under thigh support, headroom is very good, legroom is pretty nice too, actually usable third row of seats even for adults, with the only exception being if you're a six footer or plus. Now let's move to the middle row. The seats offer great under thigh support and there's just no shortage of room no matter how tall you are. Sitting three abreast won't be a problem either. The front seats are just as impressive. The powered seats can show you just how much room there is. Feels like I took an elevator to go up a couple of floors. <laughs> Knee room is also massive and the seats can be adjusted to suit just about every need. Although, what helps to lift the ambience is the new interior design. So no big surprise in terms of what you're seeing in terms of design. We've seen this on other Mercedes recently and it's just been scaled up for the GL. But all in all, definitely a big step up from what we've seen earlier in the GL and uh, looks very premium. This brushed metal finish and all these chrome trimmings really give it a very nice and upmarket look. 
The GL also comes with a lot of equipment. There's three zone climate control, fully powered seats as we've seen and panoramic sunroof for all three rows. That really does make the cabin feel airy. The cabin design does have other benefits for the driver. Now first when you get inside this car, you are going to balk even at its size. Driving it requires you to slow down through gaps that you normally just zip through. You just want to make sure that this doesn't touch any part of it, right? Um, and uh, that aside though, when you look in the back, you'll find that the view out back is pretty good. It's a big glass at the back. Uh, that aside, Mercedes though does have this 360 degree real view camera, which makes reversing and all in, uh, you know, back streets where there's lots happening around you much easier. Now the 3 litre V6 motor is something that we've seen many times before but now it has been updated with more power and torque. As we have seen with the M Plus, the motor now makes 255 bhp and has a massive 63.2 kilograms of torque. And Mercedes claims it is developed at 1600 rpm. The engine has a pleasant gravelly sound and it is always quite smooth and peppy. It is surprisingly easy to drive in stop-go traffic. The 7G Tronic has been upgraded which makes it more efficient but it could do better to match up to the motor. Now the 7G Tronic isn't as quick shifting as some other modern uh, planetary gearboxes but on the plus side it is smooth. You've also got paddle shifts which is more of a convenience thing rather than uh, something you enjoy because what you do here has a kind of distant connection with what the gearbox ends up doing. It really does cruise on the hybrid very well. I mean, the motor doesn't feel stressed, the cabin is nice and quiet, it does feel very relaxing. Show the GL an empty road and you'll find that this Rhino can sprint. And how? The GL 0 to 100 time of 8.9 seconds is hugely impressive and it has a top speed of 220 km an hour. Which brings us to the next question. So what does it feel like to drive something that's almost as big as a minibus? Well in the GL's case, you'll be surprised, it's pretty good. The 4x4 system with its 50-50 torque split does a fantastic job of keeping this massive SUV feeling neutral even when you're belting through corners. Although if you push too hard, it will slip into understeer. Adjustable air suspension helps the GL feel quite controlled too. And the sport suspension also helps. It really controls body movement and makes it easier to drive fast around corners. But the thing is you'd be better off driving the GL a notch or two down because that's when it really feels relaxed and enjoyable. What's abundantly clear is that the GL is not a Porsche Cayenne in terms of driving experience. Nonetheless, the GL can be very impressive as long as you drive it at 70 to 80 percent of its ability. Now, the GL is best enjoyed driven a couple of notches down because you know what, when you get a gap, it's kind of hard to get something this big to squeeze through. And then the second thing is when you got a shed speed quickly, even though it's got good brakes, you end up feeling the two and a half tons of curb weight. You just can't ignore that. Instead of giving your adrenaline glands a workout, the GL prefers to relax your heart rate. The hushed cabin and great straight line stability mask speed very well. The GL's adjustable air suspension lowers ride height by 15 mm at highway speeds and also levels the ride height depending on the load. What the passengers will really appreciate is the improved ride comfort. Now the old GL's ride quality was soft, a bit too soft. But here on the new car, it's a lot more control. It's soft still, very comfy, but without being wallowy or too floaty. One thing though is you will feel a couple of bumps thunking through every now and then but I think that's more to do with the 21 inch wheels that Mercedes is offering as standard on the new GL for the first 100 cars. 
there is a bit of shudder from the chassis when you nail a rough patch. Then I went to find out a bit more about the GL. Now the second generation GL for India does without proper off-road hardware like low ratios and locking diffs. But Mercedes insists that this is still pretty capable in the slush. Which is why we've come to their off-road track here at the plant to see what the new GL can do. With the hardware available to it, the GL prepared for the off-road section. Air suspension increased ground clearance by 75mm. Then there are the electronic controls to help things along. Now before we hit the off-road track, let's raise the suspension. There's air suspension can raise the ground clearance and descent control. And once we have the speed control we can of course alter the descent control speed i've set it to three kilometers an hour it's impressive let's see first is the axle twisters so i don't have to touch the accelerator or the brake we're just heading down automatic speed control i just need to steer Now this brown mud when it's wet is incredibly slippery. Again, no brakes, no accelerator, you just need to steer. The downhill control is managing the rest for me. Now this is a nice steep climb and I have to turn immediately to the left once I get up. So, <laughs> it's impressive this thing is big it does much better than I expected honestly in the thick wet slush the going wasn't easy but the GL pulled through over and over again it was all the more remarkable because it was on standard road tires now there were a couple of instances there in the slush where I thought uh oh I've done it, I've beached the GL, it's big, it's heavy, it doesn't have the low range and it was really slushy out there. But you know what, it pulled out, it really did surprise me, it did well there. And the GL overall is a very strong package, things that I really like about it, well, the cabin's spacious, for seven easily, comfortable, feels luxurious and that motor is a big strong point, very flexible, easy to drive in the city, at the same time effortless out on the highway. And uh, the GL, while it is quite accomplished, there are some things that it could do better. The ride quality could be more plush over bumps and the driving experience could be more involving, especially considering the competition on hand. And well, its size, obvious factor, is going to make it a bit unwieldy in the city. But that aside, the GL overall is really a strong and competent package. And what makes it all the more attractive now is that the second generation GL is actually cheaper than the outgoing GL.